Well, one of the things that you're a master at catching, and I'm dying to get down there on a trip with you if I ever get the time, is uh, squid fishing, man. We yeah, a little bit up here. I get, I get, might get a day or two down at the Cape during the day. But your whole operation is is incredible. Could you talk to us a little bit about you know your setup and what you do with with the squid? Sure. So, so right, what makes Rhode Island? We don't tend to have quite that crazy day bite that the Cape can get um, in the spring. But what we do have is a season that tends to last much longer, um, and it's more of a nighttime bite. And they'll come in, you know, they arrive in Rhode Island. It's going to be, this year might be a little early, right? Because, you know, it's, the water's not quite as cold as it typically gets. Um, but basically sometime and usually mid, mid-April. And then they'll stay here really until the bluefish show up. Like the stripers will start to harass them some, but you can still catch squid um, in the deeper waters because the stripers in the spring tend to go more shallow where the water's warmer. And so it's kind of nice. Like they'll they'll bump into each other a bit, but you can still squid fish. It's really not until the bluefish show up that it kind of really puts an end to the spring squid fishing. Um, and we'll go out. I love to go out in the afternoon, do a little bit of tog fishing. Um, you know, just to try to catch a few. And then as soon as it gets dark, I'll head to some of my spots. And I have a combination of underwater lights in the boat, as well as some topside light systems that I've made out of um, LED. And I run some 12 volt systems that have little like little spreader bars. And I'll, you know, set them up on either side of the of the gunnels or depending on the current or off the back transom. And it, it makes a, I'm not the brightest guy out there in terms of, of light. Well, I'm not, I'm not the brightest guy out there ever, <laughs> ever. My, a lot of people would say that. Um, but basically, you know, you don't have to be the brightest boat out there, but you have to be able to generate some light to, to attract. Um, so, so you mentioned an underwater lights. Do you have ones that change different colors or do you have a specific color that you like if you're willing to share? Or? So I set, I set mine up, Mine are green. My underwater lights are green. My top side lights are just are just white or are, mm-hmm. are, are clear. Um, and I like the green ones. I don't know. I know some guys can you know sw- sw- can rotate colors or switch colors. And I- I'm sure some lights that probably um, could be used effectively. But generally speaking, I'm relatively happy with the green ones. And I'm definitely happy with the white like the white lights from above because I, I think most of the lights from above the squid are used to seeing are either the moon or bridge lights or you know things like that so i think that part seems to work pretty well <clears throat> and that's another me. thing that's kind of nice is you're night fishing but you're not like in complete darkness like when you're striper fishing at night that you have you have that light from your your bar coming over the top it makes it a lot easier it's not as intense as like trying to stay quiet and and perfectly still and silent and dark when you're striper fishing you know right no absolutely yeah you don't you don't have to have to be that kind of stealthy and um and then i i have under excuse me under gunnel lights as well in the boat so the boat's got some light which won't blind you because it just kind of goes down to the deck and those lights are green as well um so that helps a little bit if you're you know trying to chase a squid around the deck or something like you can see where it's at or if you drop a squid jig you you can find it without having to step on it um so you know those are handy things and i usually take i always say i take basically like what i call reservoir trout gear or for guys that have ever fished for walleye to me those are the rods that are the the most effective for squid fishing you want something fairly soft um for two reasons one you know you want to be able to detect a bite and then the other thing is the stiffer rods tend to snap off tentacles if you have a large squid they can pull i mean they're not a bluefish but but you know they can generate some force and if your rod is really stiff there's a tendency if the squid really um pushes hard the other direction you can end up just with a few suction cups and you know half a tentacle um, especially on the larger ones which is sometimes like for me the ones i really want to try to catch so a softer rod kind of lets you put more squid in the boat 
and so. you're generally probably fishing multiple jigs too and the other thing about a softer rod is you don't have to worry when you're swinging them onto the deck about high sticking it and things snapping and breaking um i equate when i go when i go uh squid fishing it's just like mackerel fishing to me in terms of the gear that i use you know i'm the same way with mackerel I like using a softer rod so i'm not ripping them off those little tiny sabiki hooks there's a little bit of give there yep and to swing them onto the boat. And actually they kind of they kind of look and fight like macro, but it's really cool. Like going in the daytime, I'm sure you get it during the nighttime. Just watching them swim and watching them eat absolutely cracks me up. It's just because, you know, I don't get to do it often. So I, I have a lot of fun. I think I'm gonna try to take my mom and dad down down to the Cape this year for a day and go do a little squid fishing. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. The kick out of it. Oh, it is it, it's 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 one of my favorite things to do with guests because it's fun, you know, inks flying just to watch them change colors. And like, it's just an amazing creature um, that, you know, kids, kids love them. Adults love them. Like it, they're just, they're really neat and they're fun. And, um, and there is some skill to it, but you can also take somebody that's really very limited in their, in their experience and skill level, and they can still have fun catching squid. So it, it, it is a it's a great a great thing to target. We we do have squid up here. I have caught them while mackerel fishing during the day, incidentally, <clears throat> a couple of times. But I don't know if it's anything worth targetable during the day. But I know a lot of the guys that are offshore at night are definitely getting a ton of squid. And I don't I don't think I know anybody that typically takes out a boat to go squid fishing. But there are piers and things like that are around our area that people go to. Um, do you have any suggestions for somebody who up here who might be getting into squid fishing? What kind of um, lures and setups that they that they should use? Sure. So, so there there are basically, I mean, like anything, there's there's all kinds of variations, but there's basically two styles of squid jigs. There's one that looks like kind of an upside down ice cream cone, and those tend to be called Coleman's. That's kind of just kind of what they're referred to. Um, and then the other kind is more like a minnow style, like a shrimp or a minnow. Okay. And um, the Ozori is, they're commonly called like the Ozoris, but there's certainly other manufacturers that, that make um, squid jigs. There's just as many as there are any other type of lure. But so you, you want to get a few that either look like a shrimp or a minnow, or you want to get a few of these Coleman's that have like a thin little body and more like a, like a grappling hook basket kind of look. Um, yeah. And anyway, when the squid are being kind of tentative and soft, more often than not, the, the little Coleman jigs are, are tend to be more effective. When the squid are aggressive, um, a lot of people like to use like a little one ounce or, you know, if there's a lot of current, you know, an ounce and a half sinker, and then above it, they'll put one or two of those Yozori shrimp style jigs. So, um, so those, kind of those are the two basic, you know, it's either a Coleman or a, or a, Yos, or a minnow slash shrimp style jig. So those shrimp styles, um, are you fishing them like almost like a high-low haddock rig with a weight in the bottom and then like two dropper loops? Yep, exactly. On there. Right. The, yep, just like the, you call it a chicken rig or right, a high-low, um, absolutely. And you want to space them a little bit so that if you have to leave space, if you get a squid on the, my suggestion is anyway, if you space those jigs enough so that if you happen to catch a squid on the top on the high, as you're slowly reeling it in, that squid's going to drop down and you don't really want it to try to cover up the second jig because a lot of times if you can catch one and they're in the area and you kind of reel slow when you first hook the first one, there's a reasonable chance you can pick up a second. But if, if your jigs are too close together, that almost never happens because the, the first squid kind of covers up that second jig once he's hooked. Yeah, they're they're a lot of fun. Just like you said, the color changes and the the ink fight is always always a riot. Yep. Always a riot. I remember the first one I caught up here. I wasn't. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even expect it. I went to grab it. I was actually pretty young. It was pretty young in my fishing career. God, it must have been nine or ten. And we accidentally got one, incidentally. And I went to grab it and I just squeezed it and I just got black ink all over me. <laughs> and I I was like, what? Oh my God, they actually do that. You know, it, it's amazing how much ink. I mean, they I, don't I, stop. <laughs> no, right. I, I am continually shocked. And even when I'm cleaning them, like the next day, I'm like, these things still have ink in them. Like, it is amazing. 
Um, Greg, is I there know, a process you do to harvest them on the boat? Do you like put them in the? Do you put them in the live well, or do you? So throw them you in the can, bucket? right? The, I mean, I knew a, a, a charter captain that liked a fairly clean boat, but also knew the value of catching squid. And he actually had basically like a basket system with like a, you know some pool pool noodles that would float next to his boat, and he would when he would catch a squid, he would drop them in there first. So they would basically still swim around, but they would kind of panic. They would bump into the basket and they would ink out a fair amount um, so that when he did at the end of the night, bring him into the boat, you know, that was the probably the cleanest technique I've ever seen. But, you know, my theory is once I have a squid in the boat, I don't like to be dropping them over the side, you know, out of the boat. <laughs> um, so I don't tend to go with that, but I have seen that work. Um, but I've seen a fair number, like, You'd be surprised how many squid miss the bucket when you're trying to like unhook them over the side of the yeah. boat and get them to land in the you know in the basket. You definitely, unless you're really really focused, you're going to lose a few. And I just assume get them in the boat and keep them there. They're just such a wild creature. Like yep. <laughs> everything that can go wrong with those things, they slip free, they ink out. They're yep. just so cool. <laughs> I love yep. watching them come up to the come up to the jigs or just under the boat. Are you? Um, so I know where, where we go up here. It's mostly anchor. We mostly anchor for them. Are you anchoring? You drifting? Kind of a combination of both. So 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 I really do like to spot. Like one of the times that I love to spot lock. Um, and I, I'm fortunate enough, right, to be able to have one of the Minn Kota spot lock systems. Um, you know, so I will use that a lot because where I tend to fish, the the tide tends to quarter, and I not always, but I I certainly will fish around some of the bridges and things in the area and. One of the spots, it's very, very hard to anchor because it's a soft mud bottom and the tide quarters through the bridge. So to figure out, uh, before I had that system, sometimes I would anchor, I mean, f I'm not, not exaggerating, five, 10 times before I was happy with where where the boat would actually land. Um, and then even then, right, an hour later, as the tide changes or the wind changes, you still wouldn't be where you want it to be. That sounds um, so terrible. Oh. Yeah, no, it was brutal. It was brutal. And, <laughs> you know, and, and it, we're I'm fishing in 30, 40 feet of water. So there's a fair, you know, it, it was a bit of a process every time you had to anchor or re-anchor. So I am so spoiled now with, with the, the spot lock, with the ability to spot lock. Um, but anyway, so I tend to be fairly still when I'm squid fishing, although there are nights where there's just this, like, they're just scattered on the bottom and in which case yeah you do a slow drift is actually more effective than staying put because if you can get them to see the jig they just they just won't school up they won't concentrate so whether that's because there's predators in the area and they just don't want to do it like i haven't figured out chris why some nights that's the case yeah um but i've i've literally you know, I first learned that because you'd get ready to go. You'd basically give up the end of the night and you just, you pull the anchor. Meanwhile, a couple of guys still fish because, you know, there's nothing to do while you're pulling in the anchor and we'd start to pick up squid and I'd be like, huh, okay. And, but you know, at that point in the night, I don't want to reset the anchor again. So you kind of would go up to like, you know, the head of the drift or what you thought might be the drift and, and sure as shit, we would you know, start picking up squid. So, so now I'm quicker to go to that. If it seems like it's a frustrating night and I just can't get them to concentrate in any number, mm -hmm. but it seems like if I do find them, they'll, they'll hit. Then I sometimes just covering grounds is the answer. Maybe that drifting from their perspective, they, it looks a little bit more like they're getting further away. I'm, I'm assuming yep. you're kind of keeping it down on the bottom a little bit more. Oh yeah. You're drifting. Yeah. As opposed oh, yeah. to whatever, like jigging up and down and getting different depths, you're probably just dropping it down and kind of dragging it a little bit, you know, and right. So they're probably, they're pro it's probably in the strike zone longer. And as it's moving away in the horizontal direction, those things are probably like, Oh shit, I better get that now. Yeah, no, that, that totally makes sense. And it tends to be with the Yozori style, with the shrimp style jig. It tends to be, if we are going to drift, that's that's the jig that I'm using. And right, that looks like a little shrimp. And if you've got it on, you know, a foot and a half, you know, off the bottom on a sinker, then yeah, that just looks like a little shrimp or a minnow just kind of sliding by with the current, you know, a foot off the bottom. So you're right, that from a from a natural presentation standpoint, I have no doubt that, um, that probably right looks much more realistic than, than uh, something just going up and down ver vertically in one spot, which probably in real life doesn't happen very often. I got to get down there with you one night. 
It's on my bucket list. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd love to have you. I say we do a little afternoon of toggin because, um, you know, I don't, I don't hammer the spring tog as much in terms of keeping them, but they're certainly fun to catch. Um, and we'll do, I, you know, do a little bit of that for a few hours and then, and then right before it starts to really get dark, we can set up and you know, squid and see what, see what we can do. 